Hello podcast. My name is Emma and this is the fourth episode. Welcome back for the returning viewers and for the new viewers this is a podcast where I talk mainly about my knitting projects um, but today I have another craft that I'm going to share with you and this is some ceramics that I made. Since this is more of a knitting podcast, I'm going to talk about um, the ceramics at the end in case some of you are not interested in that. But if you're interested, um, then you can stay until the end and I'm going to show you what I made. I'm quite happy because I, uh, I took the time and I found some time to record a bit sooner than what I was expecting, so I'm glad that I found some time. Um, so I don't have that many projects to show you, but uh, this time it won't be such a long episode. So I have one finished object that I don't have with me. And I have three uh, works in progress that I'm going to show you today. And I also want uh, to show you some yarn that I got uh, for my birthday slash Christmas, since uh, my birthday is in December too. And um, it's quite a special yarn, so I want to show it to you and some uh, presents that are related to knitting. Um, so let's start. I do have to be a little bit careful because my camera can only record for 10 minutes. So I'm going to uh, to look at, uh, at it to be sure that it's recording uh, and that it hasn't stopped. So uh, the first project uh, that I finished, I think I'm going to show you in the next, uh, to show it to you in the next episode because uh, it's the beanie that I showed you in the last episode and I can't find it anymore. So I finished it, but uh, I think I may have um, uh, le left it in my parents' home when I was there for Christmas because I can't find it anymore. Um, but I had almost almost finished it uh, the last time that I recorded so I just wanted to show you how it looked when it was finished and on my head so you could have an idea of what it looked like but it's it was just a really simple beanie and I yeah, I'll show it to you in the next episode. So I don't really have a finished object today, uh, but, uh, but it will be for the next episode. Uh, so the, the first uh, work in progress that I have is a jumper that I talked about in my last episode because I did the swatch and I wanted to start it quite soon because I needed a big jumper. I needed a, a jumper that was warm enough because I don't have one. Oh, and before I start, I can talk about what I'm wearing before I start with the projects. So this is the Nofrel sweater from Petit Knit. Um, it's the really basic jumper. I made it two years ago, I think on two and a half years ago, and I uh, knitted with two strands of yarn, um, some silk mohair and a fingering white yarn. And I hand dyed the fingering yarn, fingering white yarn, with some matter, and that's why I have some speckles on the yarn so I can show you a bit better um, you can really see it on camera I think uh, the line here so I didn't alternate with the skeins and so you can see that in the first skein here until here 
I had less speckles than in the rest of the yarn. So you can see it, but in reality, you can't see it that much. I think you can still see it, but nobody told it to me. So I don't think that uh, people that don't know that I hand knitted this sweater and that I hand dyed the yarn don't see it. And I was really happy with it. I knit the smallest size and I think I didn't knit the last increase, but I can't remember really well. Um, I may have written it in my Ravelry notes. Uh, I'll put the the link um, so you can still see, so you can see it. You can have a look if you're interested. But it's quite big, and I thought that um, the armhole was deep enough. So you have you can see how much ease I have. So I stopped. Um, and I think that's one of my most worn jumper, so I'm really happy with it. Uh, so yeah, now I can start with the other jumper, the work in progress. So as I told you, um, this is quite a big jumper. Well, quite a big one. I'm used to knit with fingering white yarn, so when I knit with DK yarn, <laughs> It feels that it's a big jumper to me. So this is the Sverborg Pullover from Saint-Renaud Lund. And it's an all-over cable pullover. So here it is. You can see it. So there are cables at the front cables exactly the same ones at the back and the particularity with this sweater is that it has a high neck a high collar and a zipper so if I fold it so the collar is folded double like this if I can make it stay into place like this and I'm going to sew the zipper here. So I can try to show it a bit what it will look like for myself. It's like this and with the color, you can't see it really well. And as you can see, I went already quite far because I didn't start it last time in the last episode. So it's a bit particular, the, the construction uh, is quite interesting. So we start at the top here. Here, oh, it was too high, you couldn't see anything. So we start at the top here. So that's the, in, the bottom of the collar, of the inside collar, inside part. Then we knit one side, then the other side. Then we join in the round and we knit back and forth the collar and then and then when we arrive at the shoulders here we knit like a long um well a long we knit just a part of the shoulder here that you can see here just here those are the stitches on holds for the shoulder and then we we, d we do it on both sides and then we knit the front one side and then the other and at the same time we still uh, leave it open for the zipper and we also um, make the, the collar here um, and then when we have enough length we start knitting we start joining in the round and we knit the body so the camera stopped because it was too hot i think the light that is beneath it uh, kind of hits it uh, a bit too much so i'm going to try again i hope it will work
So, as I was saying, I am knitting the body and I still have, I think, around seven centimeters to knit until I start the ribbing and then I have the sleeves to knit and and then sew the, sew the zipper and that's it so yeah I'm really happy with it it looks a bit small right now um, I'm supposed to have I think 10 centimeters of positive ease I didn't want it to be too big because uh, those are drop shoulders I think and um, the the color is quite uh, quite high and it's like a big jumper and I didn't want it to be too oversized I have to try it on to to be sure that I'm knitting the right length um, I'm not sure yet if I want it to be where I want it to stop so I'm going to try it on and see and the cables make it a bit uh, it's, it, I, I will, it will stretch um, once I block it. But yeah, this is the first, uh, this in the first size. And yeah, as you can see, you, it, it's constructed quite a lot with the cables. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. I think um, this is not uh, an easy sweater for a beginner. But um, I like the cables because uh, we have three charts, three different charts for the right side cable, the one in the middle and the one on the left. But those are the same but symmetrical and the one in the middle is different. But the easy thing with this, these charts is that um, the, um, it has the same number of rounds. So every time we repeat a chart, it's the same for the three. So it makes it a lot easier because uh, when I knit the, um, the Sawyer pullover from Sorin Alden, so the same designer, we had I think three or four different charts, I can't remember. But what I remember is that the charts didn't have the same number of rounds. So every time we made a repeat of one chart, it wasn't the same one on the other ones. So it was a bit hard to keep track. I'm trying once again, but the camera stopped again because it was overheated. So we'll see if it stops again. I will have to make a pause and come back later so as I was saying the Sawyer pullover was a bit harder to follow but this one is um, way easier because all the charts have the same number of rounds for the repeats and also I think it's really easy uh, to to know what to do so I just have to keep track of the um, of the rounds that I'm making but then once we understand what we have to do, it's kind of easy because you see this is always the same uh, cable. So I think you have something on it. Yeah. This is always the same cable. So uh, it's really easy to know where we have to, what we have to do, um, on which side the cable is leaning. So we just have to follow what was done uh, a few rounds before and it's the same for uh, the one in the middle the only thing I made a mistake with the cables so at the back everything's good because I just followed the what I did but when I started in the uh, the cables at the front I made the first uh, the first cable on the middle lean towards the, the wrong direction but if we don't know it i don't think that we can see it and i don't want to rip it back and i could cut it and i could remake it but 
I really really don't mind it so you can see it just here that it's not leaning in the right direction but I don't mind about the yarn I already talked about it last time but it's the um, British wool uh, the color is chestnut brown and this is a fingering weight yarn that I'm holding double to make a DK weight yarn like this and yeah I love it I really like it I like the feel of it it's a rustic yarn but I um, I really don't mind the feel of it uh, on my arms um, on my body but I'm gonna be wearing a, a t-shirt underneath so it's not right on my skin but on the on my arms I really don't mind it but I um, I put it around my neck and it's a bit itchy so I don't know if I'm going to get used to it or not we'll see but I really like the feel of it on the rest of my body so yeah I think that was it and that was all that I wanted to talk about with this temper so the next uh, work in progress is where are they this one so in the last episode I said that I wanted to make some socks for my partner and myself some tabby toes socks when we are going trekking or bike packing and so I made him a pair of socks of tabby toe socks and then I made one for myself which is here so I almost finished the first one I just have to graft uh, the end the, the toes the end so I'm done knitting I just have to graft it so uh, it's almost finished and I do have to make the heel so I started with a table har cast on because I asked in the last episode if you had some uh, some cast on that you like that is elastic and a lot of you told me that the German twisted cast on or the old Norwegian cast on was quite nice and elastic so I wanted to try it but I did cast this on straight away after I recorded the last podcast so I didn't have your comments yet so I did the same and it's okay but I'll try it in the next maybe not I don't know maybe not the next sock so both of them are knit in the same way but uh, I did try it for the next work in progress so I'm gonna talk about it but that was really good because um, that made me realize that I could try other cast-ons and so yeah it was good to have uh, some of you telling me what your favorite cast on was so this sock um, the one for my partner I the ones for my partner so I made them with the fish lips kiss here and I thought I was gonna make exactly the same ones for me but then I don't know I wanted to make another another here so I thought I would knit an afterthought heel which I already knit once with another pair of socks but it was I think two years ago and I ha haven't I haven't knitted uh, again yet so I thought it was uh, a good idea to make it again so I made a line I think you can see it here so I know where to cut it and where to put the, the heel and I think I'm going to make it in white and I thought about it because uh, I 
realized that if I had a hole in it, I could remake the heel um, more easily than if I had another heel. But then when I was knitting it, well, when I was knitting the toes, I realized that it was tabby toes socks. So I'm gonna wear them in flip-flops. So the heel won't really uh, have a chance to have a hole in it, but it doesn't matter. I'm quite happy to make another heel because I often did the, uh, the heel flap and gusset and that's why I did the, the fish lips kiss heel in the last pair of socks because I wanted to change a bit and yeah this this one makes me change uh, the type of heel that I'm knitting so I'm happy with it this is the first uh, the first sock and I have to make the second one and I only need one ball of 50 grams to make a pair of socks for me so I made them a bit longer on the leg but I could have gone further and a bit higher but I think it's okay like this and I also changed the numbers of stitches for the big toe because I need my socks with 56 stitches and I think I knit my partner's socks with 60 stitches. So I recounted a bit and I can't remember how many stitches I put in here. I think instead of putting 22, I put 18 and then I cast on two. I wrote it in uh, my reverie page uh, and I will link it down below so you have all the numbers if you want to make it although I think the big toe is a bit tight I I think if I had made it with 20 stitches it would have been a bit better instead of 18 but it's okay and I also think that I was knitting it a bit tighter usually I'm a fairly loose knitter so it was, I'm knitting with 1.5 millimeters needle for sock yarn, so fingering white yarn. And usually it's okay, but I feel like this one is a bit tighter than what I usually make. So I don't know. I knit it with Magic Loop um, needles in, in magic, um, with a, a long cable for the toes but for the rest of the sock I knit it with uh, short circular needles nine, inch, nine inches and so it's usually perfect so we'll see but I, I mean it fits it's uh, it's nice to wear it but uh, I still haven't knit the the heel so I'm not sure yet how it feels but I really like them and the um, the yarn is Fable, Fable, I still don't know how to pronounce it, from Drops. So I bought a whole pack of um, different balls of different colors of this yarn, um, I think two or three years ago. And so I'm still using it. And I actually really like this color. It's just that it's made with nylon and it's super washed yarn. So it's okay. I like to wear them. And I really like the color of oh, this sock. So this is it for the for this project. And the last project is a project that I just started last week. And I haven't knit uh, a lot of it. So if you watched the first episode, uh, you may remember that I was knitting, well I had finished, a hat for my baby which was the brownie family hat by Agasalos e Bucalos 
and it's a really basic hat and I really liked it and I had knit it in the newborn size and it was perfect for the three first months and uh, now it's obviously too small but since it was a year ago and um, and so I may I'm making the same pattern here in the same yarn the same color everything similar but just uh, a bigger size so it's the size one to two years old it's this mustard yellow color that I really like and it's really soft so for a baby it's I, I really like it this is drops nipple I'm just knitting the ribbing now at the moment so it's really just the beginning of it and yeah it seems really small because I'm knitting on small circle needles so the ones the nine inches so 23 centimeters and I'm knitting it on four millimeter needles which is smaller than what the pattern calls for but I'm a loose knitter so I'm always going down one size or one and a half size so that's it for this project I don't have much to say about it at the moment so I realized that when I'm knitting just one project I'm going a lot faster and um, it was a really good project because I took it the first one the jumper uh, the Sverbog pullover because I took it on holidays and I could knit it while I was with my family and so it was easier but I started this one because I wanted a project that I could knit a bit more easily uh, without having the cone and the second ball and my phone to uh, follow the, the the rounds and the cables and yeah, this one was a lot easier to take. So that's it for the works in progress. And I wanted to talk to you about the next project that I'm going to knit. I realized when I was editing the podcast that there were bits here and there that were missing so I don't have um, every video because the camera stopped a few times because it was overheating and then it stopped another few times because it didn't have any more battery and another one time because it was up to the 10 minutes and so it stops uh, after 10 minutes of recording so I don't have everything that I was recording and I didn't see when uh, it had stopped. So at some point I was talking for 10 minutes and I wasn't recording anymore. So I'm gonna try to record uh, the parts that were missing now. Um, I was thinking about recording the whole podcast again, the whole episode but uh, I won't find the time in the next few days to record a whole episode again and I don't want to wait uh, for another three months before I record uh, this episode again so I thought that I would do it now it's still not the best time because I don't have the computer where I, with which I um, edit the, the podcast with me. So I'm not sure what parts are missing, but I'm trying to remember and um, we'll see. I hope that you still enjoy this chaotic episode and that it will not be too messy. I wanted to talk to you about the next project that I want to knit and it's a shawl. So I always thought that I wouldn't need uh, I wouldn't knit any shawl because I have enough scarves that are warm enough, that are woolly scarves and so um, I didn't think that I would need any more than those but then I found this uh, this one on a podcast and I I don't remember the, the name of the podcast. I should have written it down because I can't find it anymore. But uh, I saw it in a podcast and this is the 
um, Scout Shell from Fro Florence Sperling and I absolutely loved it so I thought that I would knit it and it's a color work shawl um, I will try to put uh, an image so you can see what it looks like and um, it's kind of um, a patchwork shawl and but yeah I, I don't know how to describe it but I will put a picture so you can see it and so I, I was looking for the yarn that I could knit it with and uh, it's a fingering white yarn that is knitted and so uh, I had been wanting to try um, a yarn for a long time so it's the the name of the brand I have it here is um, Rosarius 4 it's a Portuguese yarn and uh, I wanted to try it because it's the one that Sandra from Acasalos e Bucalos uses in uh, a lot of her patterns. It's not this base that she uses, but it's this brand. And it's non superwash, it's 100% wool, it's organic wool. So uh, I wanted to try it for a long time, and the base that I wanted to try is Duro. Um, because my local yarn shop has it and um, so I thought that it was perfect and in the pattern um, she tells us to use five different colors so to use a base color and then two colors um, with two different shades so for her it's two different shades of um, green and two different shades of pink and i liked the the green part but i didn't like the pink part and so for me i wanted to try with so i picked those colors here So, those two here are the two shades of green and then the second color with two shades are those two, so two shades of beige. They are quite close but I think they are different enough for it to be looking nice and the last color I was uh, looking for a rust color and they didn't have any in this base and I found this one which is like orange a bit of red in it it's not too orange but it's still more orange that what I had in mind and so I'm not sure about this one and that's why I didn't swatch yet and when I was post podcasting um, a few days ago I realized that I had uh, a fingering white yarn in my stash that was the perfect color I'm just gonna get it So it's, um, it's this one here. I don't know if you see the correct color, but it's, it's a, a rust color <laughs> and it's absolutely perfect. So it's um, in the same way, it's a fingering white yarn. It's 100% um, wool and um, non super wash so maybe it could go well together um, this one is from Boucle Laine which is a French brand um, a small brand in France and um, the base is called 
uh, Way 150 or Way 150. You can't see it here. Put it in the right. Yeah, yeah. And so I may try to swatch with this or maybe with the orange. I don't know. But I think I like it a lot better like this than with the orange color. So I might try, so this is with the orange color. And if I put them next to each other, maybe you can see a bit better the difference. Um, so this one is a lot brighter, a lot more orange. But I'm just not sure about um, using two different yarns in the same project, but I'll see. And yeah, I think this one would be a good option. This is a skein that I bought um, in a festival, I think two or three years ago, and I didn't know what to do with it. Um, they only had one left and I really liked it. I'm going to take the three that I have. So I never bought any yarn without any project in mind, but since this was in a yarn festival and that I could see the color and um, in reality and not just uh, on a screen. I thought that it was a good time to buy some but I really didn't know what to do with it. I didn't want to buy, I didn't know what was a sweater quantity at this time and I couldn't make up my mind. I don't remember if it was this color or this one where um, it only, there was only one skein left and I liked both of them so I thought that I would take one skein of each and then I took this one. So I had those three skeins and <laughs> I didn't know what to do with it, with, the, um, with those three. So yeah, I, I really like them, but I was, I didn't want to use them for anything. And since I had three skeins, I thought that I would use them in the same project, but I don't want to need something with with stripes and I don't know what else I can do and so yeah maybe I can use this one in this show so we'll see that's it for the knitting projects and I thought that it could be interesting uh, if I showed you some of the presents that I got that are knit related so the first one is a present from my partner and he got me a blocking kit from Coconut and it's it has it makes a bit of noise because I didn't open it yet. So it has some blocking mats in it. Uh, a cotton cloth uh, to put on top of the of the mats and then so those are T pins in which way does it open so those are T pins like this and it's perfect because until now I didn't have anything to block my projects and so it was always laying down on the floor, um, on a towel. So now it's perfect, I can correctly block my projects. To add to this set, my mom got me some blockers, um, some pins. And so those ones are quite, whoops, I dropped it because they're bigger. And so 
it's easier to pin down the, the project, it's faster and it makes a perfect line. So I'm quite happy with it and so she got me two sets of this and this is the Knit Pro and I think it's gonna be used quite a lot. So this is the first part and the second uh, present that I got is from my sister and it's some wool and it's some really special wool. The first skein that my sister got to me is this skein which is 100% alpaca and it's really really local so um, she has a neighbor well I don't know if it's a neighbor but she lives not far away from my sister and this woman has um, two alpacas and two sheep and so she makes wool out of their she makes yarn out of their wool this is the name yeah laine de la grangette and so the name of the the alpaca from whom this yarn is made from is Riti and it's really squishy it's really soft and yeah it's um i love it because it's really local we know where it comes from um and yeah it's it's so it, it makes it quite special it's a uh, hundred gram skein and it has i don't have the tag i think it's inside here And it has 191 meters so it's like a DK yarn but a DK white yarn but um, I don't know I think it's quite thin it looks like like a smart weight yarn I don't know so I'm gonna swatch with it to know what I can make out of it uh, to to know if I make like a pinny or a cowl or I don't know so I don't know yet what I'm going to do with that but I absolutely love it and the second yarn that she offered me is even more special because my sister has a flock of sheep and so um, this is for milk but she also transforms the wool into yarn and she makes everything herself and so um, she hand dyes it she hand spins it and so it makes a really nice wool it's quite um, quite rustic and um, this one is really really special because it's their first uh, lamp that they shared and so this is the first skein of lamb's wool from their flock so it's softer than the the, the yarn they usually have and so i'm the one who is gonna knit with it and so she made it with a, how do we call that, um, a gradation of colors. It's a lot softer because it's lamb's wool. And so she told me I could knit, for example, something for my baby, like a vest. I'm not sure yet because I wanted to make something that we would wear a bit more for longer because if i make a vest for my baby then he's gonna be able to wear it to wear it for some months but then 
he's gonna get bigger and it won't fit him anymore uh, or if I'm doing something for an adult size then we can wear it for years and years so I'm not sure yet um, but I think it could be perfect for a baby clothes and I'll see I'll make some swatches see how it looks like and what I like about the idea of making a vest for him is that she also got me some wooden buttons that are here and that are from a woman uh, who's a shepherd and who makes them herself by hand they're quite nice and she offered them to me because she knew that I wanted to make some wooden buttons for my cardigan which I did not finish I don't know how to make the focus sorry for that it's really not making the focus on the button and um, and yeah and so I thought that it would be perfect to have a vest for my baby and put the wooden buttons on this vest and this is the first cane that she made out of the lamb's wool but she, as she told me they have other sheep, they have other lambs so in the next years um, she's gonna be able to make some more and to, uh, to have more yarn from lambs but this is the first cane so I really want to make something quite special and if you're interested in a next episode I can show you some of her yarn um, because I have some skeins that uh, she sent me that she hand dyed and hand spins so if you're interested uh, I can show them to you that's it for the knitted part and I also wanted to talk to you about some ceramics that I made so this is quite a, a different craft but I started not long ago and I, I'm still a, a real a beginner uh, in this craft in ceramics but I thought that maybe it could interest some of you so here it is so I brought back some plates that are I made so here it is so I had some uh, so I made uh, some I put some white color and then I put uh, a transparent glaze uh, on top of it and for this line I really liked the glaze with this effect and I thought it would be a bit too much if I put I put uh, this glaze on the whole plate. So I thought I would try with just um, a line on it. And I'm quite happy with it. Um, for the rest of the plate, for the white part, I'm not happy about it. So I, I don't know if you can see it clearly on the camera, but we can see the the brushes uh, the the brush uh, that I used we can see that it left some marks on the on the plate and so it's not perfect so I'm still learning about glaze and how to use it and how to apply it on uh, the on the projects so everything's not perfect but we've been using them already and they're perfect so i'm happy about them i'm really a beginner in ceramics so i don't uh, i don't have i don't make a lot of stuff and it's only once uh, a week so it's not like I, I don't have time to do it at home so I don't make a lot of stuff but uh, everything that I make is quite special and uh, yeah I'm really loving them so yeah, I wanted to show, show them to you it's really quick because I don't really know what to say about those plates not like 
with knitting where I can talk about the project and the yarn and stuff. Um, here it's just basic plates with yeah a bit of color. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm quite proud of those plates. So that's all. I hope that you enjoyed this podcast and I will see you next time. Bye.